Good morning. It's morning here. You well, know, it's 8.26 mountain time right now. Good morning. There we go. The video finally popped up and I get to hear the voice come back at me. I thought I could catch it this time, but no. All right, so let's talk about this. It's early. I know that I may not get many people live here, but let's talk about this topic from a different angle. Um, developing licks is definitely going to become a class. If you like this, check the video description later and I'll update it. We took a riff in this last video and the riff was really simple and we developed it. We just made it longer. That was the whole goal of what we were doing. And I just demonstrated how you could take this riff, which is essentially like four draw bending into a little bit of that four bend and sliding down to two draw. And then we added notes to it. So just to let you hear an example, it's the key is keeping the same notes you find and just adding to it. And so on, just to give you the example, and this is an A harmonica. So um, today I want to talk about um, developing these ideas from a different direction or in just a different light. So let's talk about it. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that you can take, we added notes to the end of this idea. This is a really simple concept just to elongate your ideas to get longer phrasing going. Instead of adding to the end of the idea, something else you should be thinking about is coming into the idea. So adding notes before the original idea. So let's take the same idea. Why, why reinvent the wheel, right? That's the whole idea here. We're, we're not having to reinvent each time. And let's bring a few notes into this riff. Again, uh, you know, I don't have it up on the screen. I guess I could actually. Ronnie, what are you doing? Use the technology. Here's the whiteboard. Um, and if we just take the original idea, a harmonica, and we put four draw, maybe remember that's like kind of a slur into that four draw, four bend and then three draw, two draw. And what I said is now, instead of adding notes after, we would experiment with coming into the riff. So let's do that. Um, let's do exactly that. So th how do you do this? Well, I'm gonna get into all this when I teach the class this Saturday. But one thing to think about is just scale notes first. <clears throat> we'll talk about this in class, but look, examine the notes that are just the obvious choices right there for the grabbing. All these scale notes are gonna work some will work better than others depending on the context. So, the note that's popping into my head right now is five draw. Again, an A harmonica. And so you're taking that five draw into the riff. So let's, let's do this. Let's put a divider, like a little, uh, no, not that way. Where's the other one? This one. Nope, this one. And let's just come into the riff adding ideas, building, backwards makes sense so we grab one note we bring it in then i grab a note before that note i just added right so we added the five draw now what's the next logical thing you can think of take a minute and think about it before i just you know throw these ideas out there maybe we just take a six blow Right, so we would just add that six blow right here. Scale notes, just thinking scale notes. Now I can make scale notes from the blues scale or I could start to think pentatonic and bring in some of those notes because I'm constantly mixing these scales anyway. One thing that you have to pay attention to, which is gonna be really cool in this class, is that the phrasing starts to evolve. Hopefully, organically, you're paying attention to how you put these notes together. Instead of just randomly playing a note, you're trying to hear the context of these notes moving and what that phrasing would become. Did you catch the note I added before that? Seven draw. From that pentatonic. So you see what I'm doing? I'm moving, I'm building out backwards, right? From into the, moving into the riff. Last time it was at the end. The other thing you can examine is coming into, um, if, you, if you're adding at the end of a riff, you would just think about, hey, well, uh, what about the whole I'm already on? Like, for example, 
uh, you ended the original idea on two draw, what's available in that hole? Start utilizing those notes. So in the class I'm going to go teach, I'm hoping the folks that are starting to sign up now are going to submit their own riffs, like I mentioned in this last video. And in submitting the riffs, I'll bring in your exact ideas between three and six notes, and we'll develop them together, just like we're doing here. And I think people are going to get a better sense for how they can do this when they're playing in real time. So when you're improvising, you know, you don't always have to search for that brand new idea. And I think this this is a very simple concept to grasp, but I wanted to come on and, and share with this, this other angle that you can take, not just adding to the end, but coming from before the riff. And then the other obvious way to, to reinvent an idea um, and sort of give it new life would just be, and it's a little more advanced, I would say, we're not going to do this in class. I feel like that's a whole other discussion is removing and adding notes to the original idea, just rephrasing the idea. So if the idea is, that's too short of a riff, you probably want to work with a longer riff. You'd want to take a riff that's like six to 10 notes and you want to rephrase that. Good morning, everybody. Rocket Girl is here. What's up? Good to see you. Lease. Look at that. Lease. I remembered. Am I right? Tell me I'm right. Give me the, let me know that I got that right. And good morning. Somebody's tuning in from India. Good morning to you. So take your riffs and develop them. That's the whole idea I want to, I want to impress to you today is that I want you to start thinking about developing your own riffs to the point where you intimately know some of the ideas that are in muscle memory, right? These grouping of notes that we would commonly play. However, you have many ways that you can sort of tweak it. And that could just be the phrasing of the notes themselves or the addition of, of these notes. I think it's a cool topic to explore. I look giant on the screen. I'm like zoomed in. Whoosh. I got up real early this morning, already did my grocery shopping. It's fun to get to the store when no one's there. I'm kind of a recluse, not just a recluse, but I, I like quiet. I have an issue with uh, being around too many people sometimes. Good morning, Johan from Peru. Buenos dias. Como estas? All right. All right, I'm just going to play around here. That's my idea. I'm going to add to the beginning of it. Just added two notes before. Now one blow is a tough note to add. So th this is where the class will, will pay off because you might paint yourself into a corner where it's like, ew, I don't know what I would put before that one blow. And so you're thinking of other ideas, like bringing in the bend, for example, or coming from above. Changing the attack, absolutely, these are different ways. But I wanted to focus on these two extent, you know, concepts of extending before and after. Because I feel like that's a whole other concept, you know, the rephrasing game, because it can go, you can get deep into that. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. There's just so many ideas. And what happens is when you start to get into this idea of <clears throat> longer phrasing, what you're doing is you're developing your own style in a sense, because instead of inserting the generic riff <clears throat> that a lot of players might be playing, you're thinking outside the box a little bit. If you practice this, you can do it in the moment. This could become part of your thematic approach to improvisation, honestly. <clears throat> Man, I need a glass of water or something. Four and five draw, double stop before the riff. Probably, I don't remember what I did. That would be a double stop, just to let you hear that. 
on the four five. Because I think that once you get into um, some of this longer phrasing, your fluidity starts to change and you can really, it brings in the creative flow. You start to think of these other ideas. Like, let me just play around with something. I had a dream, this is weird. I had a dream last night of, a, of, a, of, of, of somebody playing and I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was me or somebody else, but they were soloing, taking a solo on the harp <clears throat> and they were like, they did this. That was the that was the part of the dream. They took double stop, like five six draw into the bend, then blue, and then four draw. This that's all I remember from the dream. Literally, is a part of a riff. So random. Um, so the longer phrasing. And what's cool is these longer phrases feel easier to marry or bring together and combine. They become very much um, call and response oriented, like, boy, good luck. Let's see if we can do this in the moment. Well, you can't think about it. That's when it happens. So maybe it should, it'll happen fine. <laughs> ended on that little four blow, which is not a common area to end a riff in second position, and then moved into that from somewhere else as a response. So, and that's another concept we'll get into is like resolve and not resolved. A lot of these root notes end up resolving an idea so where the tension is dropped and you're moving on to the next idea. And I think that's why people are scared to use outside root notes. They're not thinking like, hey, those other note choices suspend, create a little suspension that you can then work with and feed off of. Does that make sense? Good. Dwayne found his clips of the low G. Awesome. Another good guy to check out would be Joe Felisco, who has some wonderful low tune clips out there on the Thunderbird. He's quite the player and teacher. So if you're not tuning into Joe Felisco, be sure to look up Joe Felisco. I want to give a shout out to my friends out there in the harmonica world, Adam Gusso, Jason Ritchie, um, Carlos Del Junco. How about it? Thank you, Carlos, for all the support. If you ever see this video, he's constantly sharing my classes on Facebook. Uh, he's just a cool guy. Uh, and who else? There's so many people. Howard Levy. You know, I'm a lucky guy. I want to stop and pause for a minute and just say that, like, when I first started playing in the 90s, I developed a strong interest in all, like we all do, of like specific players. And I never thought that I'd become close friends with a lot of these players. And I feel so lucky and fortunate, that's the word, fortunate to have connected and made a lot of these people that were my heroes and idols, close friends of mine. Um, Kim Wilson, guys that I never thought I'd have their phone number and get to reach out and talk to. Now, I don't call Kim very often, but like if I, had a question or wanted to talk to him, I can. And that's like, just that's just ridiculously crazy to think about. And I wanna mention something else. This is super spontaneous. I don't know if I'll keep this video up after I say all this stuff, maybe I will. There's a lot of people that have, not a lot, but a handful of people written to me saying, hey dude, get your, get your shit together, <laughs> essentially. Um, your channel's becoming a, um, you know, just a, uh, you're just pushing your classes and you're not, where's the content and all this? Let me explain something or, or ragging on me for doing maybe the Honer stuff, the Pentaharp. First of all, um, I stand behind everything I do. Like the, the Pentaharp, Honer is my family. I work with Homer, Honer, but I, they're also like family to me. So I'm always going to be involved in anything that they find valuable, I'm going to find valuable too. So I'm, there's that, and I don't have to defend or explain that. As far as coming on and having fresh creative content to share with everybody, and not just another promotional video for a class coming up, um, I probably won't go too deep into this, but I will say it. Uh, uh, how can I put this? I have, a, I have a pretty extraordinary life that's not a typical life that I don't talk about. It's really private. 
So people are like, why'd Ronnie disappear? Or Where, what's going on with Ronnie? Or something's off or different. Yeah, there's a lot going on in my world. I have a lot of uh, heavy things happening that have been happening for over a decade. So without getting into all that, it's to say that I'm surviving. I'm surviving emotionally. I'm surviving. I'm getting through often a day just physically and emotionally. And I also have a lot of financial responsibility in my world. Extraordinary stuff that I have to take care of outside of what any most people would ever could even imagine what that would be like, what I'm in right now. So... There's reasons for why I am the way I am or why I pitch stuff and I just want to put it out there. I just want to mention that it's it's not just that what's wrong with him or there's things going on. We all have stuff that we deal with. But if you deal with somebody in your life who's been chronically ill, like really ill for years and years and years, I have a heart for you and I'm thinking about you even if I don't know you. And that's some of what I'm dealing with. And so now you know there's there's some really heavy underlying stuff and sometimes i can't jump on youtube or i can't come up with a i don't have the energy for a creative fresh today is a unique day that's why i'm doing this i woke up and i'm having a great day so i wanted to come on and and connect with everybody that was that was my motivation that was it you know like hey i feel good let's connect and most days it feels impossible so that's that's it now you know that there's some pretty heavy duty stuff going on. I know everybody's got their things, but I wanted to share with you that I don't really put that out there because it's very private and it's hard to explain all that. So there's that's what it is, that's what's up. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into any other detail about that, but all right, <laughs> not, to, not to end on a somber note here, um, Good morning to everybody that is here. Thanks, Jan. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the people. And so thank you if you're one of those people that has been supporting me, buying my classes and, and checking out what I'm doing. You don't even know. You, I, you just don't realize how much of an impact you've made on my life to be able to survive to the point that I have and that my family has. And so you... I, I could never thank you enough and I could never explain what that means to me. So while I don't open up about all my, my personal life because I feel it's hard to to talk about all that, know that um, I think about the people, my supporters. There's a reason why I put my all into the classes because I want you all to know that I really care too. You know, people are spending good money to connect with me in these classes. So I want to connect back. So that's what's going on. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. Oh, and in the class, we're going to talk about third position too. So we're going to take some of these simple short riffs. Please, if you have signed up, submit something. Send me an idea of what you're already playing. Give me a sample riff. Let me just get this a little more light. Send me a sample riff, you know, of what it is that we can bring into the class. A simple idea. And we'll get to it. Play a tune. tune. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate the comments. Cool. Yeah, we all got some heavy stuff, man. Everyone's dealing with things, so I don't discount that either. But all right. What else do I want to share with you? I think that's it. And sometimes it'd be nice to come on when I'm feeling up to it and just not have to have an agenda or a class to pitch and just hang out. There's been some times when I've done that, not very often, but a couple times. You know, maybe 
maybe not a, every time I've ever tried to do a regular scheduled stream or an idea where I'm going to do this every Tuesday, I never do it. So I just, for what it's worth, I know that I'm totally flaky in that department. I'm very spontaneous and I'm very much in the moment. So things change. I might say, Hey, I'm going to do this, but then I don't do it. And something else comes up. Um, and if you're like, Hey man, Where's all the content lately? Go back and dig into my library of videos. There's many videos that I've released since 2006, when I was just a young lad, before I got gray into my chin. And um, there's plenty of content on several topics. If you want to learn harmonica from me, go to this website right here <laughs> and go to the store tab and go to Ronnie's classes or favorites i think it's called now or something like that and check it out because i've put out a bunch of content over the last two and a half years through zoom and i've deleted hundreds of classes anybody that's bought those less expensive poor quality older classes they're all gone now from the website but i have been building out the higher quality content not only is it higher video and audio content but it's a bet it's better teaching because i have more experience now Nothing wrong with the teaching from when I was first getting into it. I stand behind all that. But like, I'm just a little more, I've got better ideas. I've got my, I've got my teaching paradigm a little more solidified. So check some of that out. And when I'm feeling good, you guys, I'll just start coming on more often. So if you don't see me now, some of you that are tuning in, I know only a small percentage of people will catch some of what I just shared, but now you know there, there's good reason for why i sometimes am seemingly a little off or something like that we're all human you know what i mean so uh life just comes in and affects you i hope to see you soon thanks for hanging out this morning just wanted to share that other extra idea um of how you can build out some of your own riffs so if you're not going to check out the class saturday take what you already know that's the message take what stock of what you do and here's another thing what if I created a riff diary? Would anybody buy that? Like an actual nice like ring binder that you could journal your riffs in. Now you could do that in any notebook, but I want one that says like harmonica one, two, three, my blues riffs or something. Somewhere where you, when you're inspired, you're writing it down. The, not, not on your computer, not typing. The act of just writing that down. There's something powerful about doing that. My dad told me that years ago and I'm finally starting to listen to him. But you got to write it down. So it'd be cool to have something on the website where I could sell Ronnie's Riff Diary or something like that. Right? Hey, Jawan, good morning. Um, yeah, hey, Dwayne, I do have an F sharp, but I, um, I have it as a low. They, Rocket Low makes now an F sharp. You can buy a low F sharp, the Honer Rocket Low. Uh, never owned a high F sharp because it was just too high. It does give me happiness, Lise. I'm going to keep saying that so I don't forget. Oh, cool. Yeah, some of the riffs remind me of the vamp riffs um, for background. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how when you're building upwards and, and just adding a note at a time, it's often going to be this strategy of some scale note stuff. What I can't wait for is, is people start submitting these ideas to me so I can see, okay, what are people, what is their common riff? And be like, what happens when we, when we go for a version of it and then say, let's do that one one more time, but not choose that, that first note choice just by changing the first additional note choice to a new note choice? could put you in a completely different direction. So you're not always thinking adjacent holes. The six became the new extra note I added after two draw, for example. Instead of just building in and around that area. So there's a lot to discuss on this topic is what I'm saying. Morning people, you're the best. Appreciate all you guys hanging. I can't believe there's actually even 
as many people as there are hanging out live. I know it's not a, a huge crowd, but like it's early. Well, some of you, it's it's later, I suppose. You're on the other side of the planet. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. I think I'm gonna jump. I got some lessons to prepare for. I'm excited for Saturday's class. I'll put the link to the class in the video description. And thanks for thanks for hanging with me, y'all. And and following me if for those that have followed me for years and years thank you for still tuning in and and uh, again for all the support i appreciate you guys got a lot of love for you i hope to see you real soon okay make it a good day